evening, Diana Prazak. Good evening. Thank you so much for talking to Bayloric TV. It's my pleasure. Okay, for those who don't know who you are, give us the stats. I am the WBC World Champion, WIBA World Champion at Super Featherweight, um, 130 pounds or 59 kilos. Okay. I'm currently ranked number one in the world as Super Featherweight, and um, my record is 13 and 2. Okay, so what got you into boxing? Um, I just joined a gym to get back into shape, to get fit and back into shape, and um, I kind of found my calling. Okay. And um, it kind of just, you know, went, went forward from there. So where do you hail from originally? Um, I'm from Australia, Melbourne, Australia. Oh, wow. I and uh, and that's where I started my career. Um, I had my, my amateur career there, all six fights, a year and a half. Um, I started boxing when I was 27 years old. I walked into the gym first when I was 26. Had um, six amateur fights. Um, I won them all um, and the Australian title in, the, in my sixth fight. Um, four of the six um, fights were all from knockout. And then I turned pro. Um, a year and a half later, and um, I won my first WIBA um, title after a year and a half of being on pro. Okay, okay. Um, so, how did you hook up with the legendary Lucia Riker? Um, I was in LA. Um, I was in the States. One of um, our stable mates had a fight in Texas, and um, your gym obviously is like your family. So. Um, we, we all, the, you know, the whole gym basically flew to support him in Texas and I was in LA for four days and one of my, one of my mates from um, Australia is a journalist and she had spent, uh, I think it was a week training with Lucia um, for a book that she wrote right. and, um, and so she hooked up, um, hooked me up with Luce for, um, to do a couple sessions or oh, actually it was only going to do one session and, um, and I loved it, and so we did another session that um, that week before I left Texas. And um, unfortunately, I saw my mate get um, beat pretty badly. Right. Um, it was a WBA title fight he fought Austin Trout, and um, yeah, it, it didn't go so well for him. And um, you know, we headed back to Australia, and I decided that um, if I was going to be a part of this sport, I wanted to do it properly, and um, and that meant leaving Australia and and making a a name for myself on the world on the world stage and becoming the greatest fighter that I could possibly be, and I didn't believe that could happen in Australia. So I moved to the states and um, hooked up with Lucia and um, virtually begged her and hassled her to be my trainer until she said yes. And what has Lucia brought to the table? We knew that she's a great fighter, but what does she bring to the table as a trainer? Um, intelligence is probably the best thing. Um, you know, we, we all get, you know, fighters are, you know, we're, we're all fighters and, we can, and, you know, I already knew how to fight before I came to Lucy. I was already pretty headstrong and I still am headstrong. And um, I have that go for it attitude, but she's made me a much more intelligent fighter. She's, um, I mean, it hasn't happened instantaneously, in, instantaneously, that's for sure. You know, it's, it's something that, you know, we've, we've been together for three and a half years now. So, um, you know, each, each, each fight we see improvements. But she's made me a lot smarter in the ring and um, a lot calmer in the ring. I don't, I don't get hit as much as I used to. Right. <laughs> it's, it's always good when you don't get hit as much, eh? Yeah, it's for the, you know, b before I got, she's crossing her fingers right now. She's going, <laughs> believe me. Um, you know, when, when I first got, you know, I won my first world title when I fought Lindsay Garbett from Canada. Right. Uh, she was the world champion and she was Boxer X world number one at the time. Okay. And when she, and when I um, fought Garbett, I was, um, you know, I was a relative novice. I had six pro fights and... Um, she was a gigantic step up for me, and I won that fight um, as the biggest underdog in in the world. You know, everyone laughed when they saw the the fight um, online and um, said I had no chance in hell. And I kind of won that fight through pure will and stubbornness alone. I refused to take a back step, and I I walked forward and I wore every punch she threw at me, and um, but I just kept throwing them back. So 
when Lucia got me, um, I was already tough. There was no doubt about that. I was already a world champion, but she's made me, um, she's made me the fighter I am today, and um, she she made me number one in the world in the WBC, a two-time world champion. So now, super fights. The super fights eluded Lucia because she was meant to fight. She was going to get Christy Martin. She never got that fight. She, um, Alayla Ali. She never got that fight. What are super yeah. fights for you? Who are the super fights for you? Well, just look at my record. I am where I am now because I just picked all the champions off off Boxrec and said and, and got matched up with them. Right. So um, I'm I'm not a May fighter. I don't believe in having a padded record. Right. Um, I, I am where I am now in my career because I fought all the champions and all the world number ones. So um, when you ask about super fights, I'm in the process of doing them and I've, I've been having them already. Um, you know, the next fight we have coming up against Delphine Persoon on the 11th of November, right. you know, that is a, that, that's a super fight as well, you know. Um, I'm the WBC champion at Super Featherweight. She's the WBC champion at Lightweight. Oh, you know, how wow. often do you see two WBC champions, current, two current BoxRec number ones? It's a five-star fight. If you look at BoxRec at the moment, it's the only female five-star fight that's listed amongst the 16 men's fights of the day. Um, where we, we all put it on the line each time. So um, when you say um, super fights, I, I'm living that at the moment. I'm doing that. In each one of, of my fights. So you are the super fights then. You are the super, in terms of what you're doing. You're actually you're doing it. Well, yeah, definitely. I'm not. I'm not scared of no one. And, you know, if you're gonna be a fighter, um, you know, a, a fighter is a warrior. It's someone who who steps into the ring and fights the best. You know, the best in their division, and um, and keeps pushing themselves to the next level. You know, there's too many fighters out there at the moment who. You know, they've got these padded records, these world champions. They're not world champions. It's, they've just got a belt that looks really pretty, and but they fought a bum to get it, you know. So, you know, we, we really know the truth. So, so I'm going to throw the name Floyd Mayweather in there very quickly because mm-hmm. the Manny Pacquiao fight is the fight that everybody wants to see. This is not happening. Do you think it's I running agree. Or, Everyone would love to see that fight. So do you think it's running or what? What do you think that is? I don't think that it's my position to talk on that. Uh, you know, there's got to be, there's got to be, they have their reasons. I'd love to see it. I'm like every other boxing fan out there. I'd love to see that fight. Um, and I hope it happens. You know, both both guys are coming towards the Floyd, Floyd and May, Manny. Um, the um, both both of those guys are coming to the end of their careers. I'd love to see. You know, they're no longer. I don't believe in their peak anymore. Right. Um, I'd love to see it before they retire. Finally, um, Oscar De La Hoya said that he is going to be doing more for women's boxing in the near future. How do you think? What do you think is? Did needed? he say that? Did he really he say said. that? That's what he said on a. Um, he said it on a one of the uh, women's the, the recent women's uh, the convention in Mexico. Yes, he said that. Now I don't know if he said that because that was a. Um, one second, was um, Flo- um, Oscar De La Hoya was at the WBC convention in Mexico, and he said that he was going to do more for women's boxing boxing in the near future. Is what this gentleman saying? Yep. Sorry, Lucia asked what what yeah. you said. So, um, and he I said hope that. so. I he, hope he is. <laughs> That. No, God, I, I hope so. No, I hope so. I'll just talk. I hope he puts his money where his mouth is. is. Well, yeah, because oh. um, it, so I mean that's what I I mean I'm hearing this, but I've heard previous information as to hear that he really wasn't that interested in women's boxing. Now I heard this, I'm like, hold on, is he saying that because he's at the convention, or is he saying that because he's actually going to do something about it? Well, I, all I can say is that you know I really hope so. It's um. You know what? The the reality situation is is we're in 2014 and it's still negative to be a female athlete, not just in boxing, but in so many, you know, in, in sports in general. And it, it's really sad, you know. We, we preach equality to our kids and our peers, yet we, we don't we, we don't preach we don't show it. We we don't um we have we there's no none of our actions follow our words. So you know, if someone um, like Oscar De La Hoya can step up there and and say that he is going to do more for women's boxing, he'll he's the first person to do it because Mike Tyson said it for Mike Tyson Promotions. Floyd Mayweather said it for for, May, for the Money Team. He said he was going to do it. 
um, top rank didn't say they were going to do it. Um, it's, you know, they have to do it. They have to do it eventually. They have to do it eventually, you know. What scratches my head and confuses me is that fighters in America seem to be stuck in America, yet the fighters in Europe and the female fighters in Europe seem to be doing okay. Well, yeah, exactly. They they, they have the value for, for what we're doing over here. I mean, look, Lucia and I are in Europe right now. You know, um, we, we both live in, in Los Angeles. You know, my home is Australia, but I, I live in LA to, because I'm trying to become, you know, better myself as, as an athlete. Right. Um, yeah, we travel all over the world to fight. You know, this is our second time I won WBC because I came to came here last time. I, I fought in Sweden and fought Frida Wahlberg to win the WBC title. Now we're here again to fight in Belgium to to fight um, Delphine. We travel, we're traveling constantly to fight, but we we you know we don't have any fights in Australia, you know, and um, it's it's really sad. It's got to it's got to change. We don't have any fights in in the US yet. Yeah, that's what we're saying. Yes, it's it's got to happen. It's got to happen sooner it's, rather than it's later. It's got to happen. All these conventions, at the conventions, all right, saying these things, but what, what's being done? Who, who's the the person that controls the World Bo- Women's Boxing Organization? Whatever it is, how come they're not knocking heads together and saying, we have to make something happen? Why is uh, it happening? I, I, don't, I don't know, mate. You're asking that, that loaded question that, that we're all asking. So, because, um, you know, we're, we're all working our asses off for it to make it happen, you know? Um, we're all training, we're, we're, we're all pushing for it. Um, unfortunately, though, um, the, you know, the big boys that, that make the decisions, you know, they are, they are all big boys. They, um, they're, the, you know, they're the people we're waiting for. Okay. Okay. It's just so, so odd that, you know, there was one time you saw Lucia and Mia, Mia St. John and Christy Martin yeah. on the big fights. You saw them on TV with the, on the undercard, the big fights. Yeah. It just suddenly just came to halt. Yeah, that's true. Why? Oh, I, I don't have that answer. <laughs> I wish I did, but I don't have that answer, mate. Very quickly, we're ending now. Um, a message to your fans. That I'm going to keep pushing. We're going to keep making the impossible possible. Possible. We, you know, we're looking for victory at every every turn in the road, and um, and I'm going to be doing everything in my power to make that happen. Champ. Thank you so much for talking to Bayloric TV. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. No problem. Take care. Thank no, you very much. Catch. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye bye.